All right, CL Brown, you're starting us off, then Aaron Beard. Make sure you check the request. All right, Coach, um, I was wondering when you are when you're deciding on a starting lineup, how much do you weigh experience versus talent versus, you know, maybe a, a young, talented? Oh, still, I think you do both. Uh, I can't give a, a weighted number to either one of them. Uh, you know, in uh, 06, we lost to everybody. So the first game I started, Bobby uh, Marcus and Tyler Hansrow. It was an easier decision with Tyler, uh, you know, than perhaps some other guys. But uh, I think you do look at both. Uh, but I think even more importantly than that, the trust that you have that they're going to do what you want them to do. And five weeks of practice, how they done in uh, gaining your trust. And I think uh, – Talent should take over almost all the time, uh, but it doesn't, and it, it never has taken over completely for me. I've already seen uh, today Duke announced that their their opener ends up because of Gardner Webb COVID issues. They're not going to be able to play on Wednesday. Um, how are you approaching coaching in a situation where you know if you guys play Wednesday, who knows if you end up missing a couple of games and don't play for another week or something like that? Like, how do you kind of temper that? <laughs> I don't handle it very well, but it's the world we live in right now. Uh, somebody else canceled their first four games until December seventh. There was a football game, I think, on. Uh, Saturday morning that was canceled. It was supposed to be going to be played at 12 o'clock. And uh, it's the world we live in. I don't like it. I like normalcy. I like a routine. Uh, but that's not what we have right now. You can just do everything you can possibly do and still have a slip up. But uh, the process, you need to do everything you can possibly do and then be prepared to handle everything as well. Aaron Beard, then Josh Graham. Roy, CL sort of touched on the topic I was going to ask you about. I am curious, you can only control what you can control. So how much do you sort of worry, I guess, or let yourself worry about from now to Wednesday getting to tip off uh, versus just, you know, doing the normal things you would try to do, assuming you're going to play like normal? Yeah, you're concerned about it. Uh, the biggest thing is if you spend all your time worried about that, you're not ready to get the uh, job done or not spending your time preparing your team. And it's a little bit, but it's a much different situation. But it is if Doc Allen's thing, if the mailman stopped to bark, to kick at the dog that barked, it never get the mail delivered. And so a little bit about that same dy dynamic, there is that we've got to do everything we can and be able to handle the new information and be able to handle the next new information and be able to handle the next information. Josh Graham. Coach. Um, obviously, it's a pretty big week with basketball starting. Notre Dame's obviously coming to town, too. And I know how interested you are in following all the teams. So, Max said a handful of times, you guys have had a longstanding relationship. And there are things in watching your team he's adopted that's made him a better football coach. I'm just interested, is there anything you've taken from him um, in your relationship that's made you a better basketball coach? I watch coaches all the time and every sport. Uh, I think I've said many times, I think Anson Dorrance on our campus is the best coach I've ever seen in any sport at any time. Uh, and so I've learned some things from Anson. I do learn some things from Mac. I think last year, the preparation, uh, the start of the season for those first games, I think uh, Georgia, I think was the first game last year. I'm not sure, but I was in the stands in Charlotte. But uh, so I think just getting ready, you're getting your team ready to play. The other thing about Mac is the positive uh, feelings and the positive and the confident, positive statements and the confidence that he gives his team. I think after a game, he's very straightforward, very blunt. But I know that going into those situations, he's trying to build as much confidence as he can. And I think last year, the job uh, that he and Coach Lonzo did with a freshman quarterback that resulted in that kind of performance is something I've always admired. And uh, uh, this year, uh, I'm concerned if we're going to stop people, but we're going to score. <laughs> you know, we're going to hang a half a hundred, as Barry Switcher used to say. We're going to hang a half a hundred on them, so they better be able to uh, do something. But uh, and I think our defense is getting better. But I do. I learn from all the coaches. Brendan Marks, then Andrew Jones. 
Hey, Roy. Good afternoon. Thanks for taking the time to do this. I, I was just curious, how's the front court shaping up? Obviously, Garrison back, ACC preseason player of the year, but also Armando, Dayron, Walker, Sterling. How have you been uh, sorting out the minutes so far with those guys, and, and who has been impressing you? Well, the worst thing about our preparation this year is there were six freshmen in the mix for playing time, and I'm talking about major playing time, not having an exhibition game, not having a scrimmage, with officials in there, regular ACC officials. We're, we're going into a game Wednesday night, and, and we're not prepared because we haven't had any of those things, and we've got six freshmen in. But uh, the front court, Garrison is a security blanket. There's no question. He gives you that feeling that he's going to do the right thing or come close to doing the right thing every darn time. Uh, Armando is better. He's more experienced. And then I think with Day, Ron, and Walker, you got uh, two extremely gifted kids. And uh, how we're going to mix up the minutes, I have no idea. And that's I've always thought that that's what the exhibitions uh, give you and that's what your scrimmages give you. And we haven't had any of those. The first time we go out there and play somebody else, it counts. Is, is there a potential that Garrison, I know he worked a lot on his perimeter shot this summer, is there potential for him to slide out to the wing alongside two of those other guys potentially? We did it one day in practice. He turned it over the first day of time. I, he handled the ball, so that's not the way to impress me. But we've, we've had it a couple of times in practice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Andrew Jones, then Alyssa Ray. Hey Coach, about a month ago when we uh, had you on, we asked you about Leaky Black being healthy, and he hasn't been healthy very often. Now, a month later, how is he kind of progressing, and, and, and what are you looking to get from him this year? All right, Andrew, I'm going to answer this in a very positive way, and if he jinxes us, I'm going to hunt your butt down, but knock on wood, uh, Leaky's last several practices has, has been healthy, and at, during some times in our practices, he's been sensational. And we've got to get that kind of consistent, that kind of play consistently from him all year long if we want to be the best team that, uh, that we can possibly be. He's able to do things that other guys can't do. Uh, his defensive play and his ability to sneak up on the board, to block a shot, to deflect the pass, he'll have more of those kind of plays than everybody else on our team put together. And the last week or 10 days, uh, he's been healthy enough to do those kind of things. He also told us that he's a lot more confident than he's ever been. Do you see that just not just in the way he plays, but the way he's carrying himself around the younger guys? Well, I think the the knowledge that the experience is what that had, uh, you know, makes kids do because you just know what's expected of you. You know what could possibly be the outcome if you do A as opposed to B. So I think the experience factor and the fact that he feels better probably than he's felt in a long time. Thank you. I appreciate that. Alyssa, then Greg Barnes. Yeah, Coach, going back to Garrison Brooks, how have you seen him grow as a player and a leader, and what do you think his potential is this season? Oh, you know, Alicia, he had a great year for us last year. Uh, he was the uh, one person that we could count on, except when we go to Louisville when he gets sick and can't play in the game. But uh, uh, he did some fantastic things. He made a tremendous jump from sophomore year to junior year. And it's hard to make that kind of uh, – magnitude of a jump from your junior to senior because they got it at such a high level. You know, if a guy makes uh, 40 on a test and then all of a sudden goes to 80, that's pretty good. But it's hard to go from 80 to 160. And I think he got himself in the 90 point range last year. So it's hard, hard to make. He's a much better leader. He's taken that role more seriously. Uh, when we discuss things, particularly off the court, I talk to him, he gives me his opinion freely. Uh, he's talking to the guys, talking to the freshmen, uh, trying to get them to understand things. And, and I've seen him pull a guy over to the side uh, when he's not in and we're doing things four on four and talking to the older, I mean, the younger guys. And I think he's doing a fantastic job. Greg Barnes, then Kiara. Hey, Roy, wanted to circle back to, to CL's opening question. Have you determined a, a starting lineup for Wednesday night? No, I have not. Uh, we scrimmaged amongst ourselves last night, and uh, uh, that gives you some good feelings, some bad feelings. Some some guys move up the ladder, other guys get on the slippery slope and slide down. But uh, I have not made a decision yet, and no one on my staff uh, knows the decision. And the reason they don't is because Old Roy doesn't know it. Um, and you mentioned Garrison's leadership growth. Uh, 
you've been around quite a while coaching guys in a year like this where they're not able to be together maybe as much as they normally would because of COVID. Um, how challenging has that been for the players to, to be able to lead during the off season and preseason? And what have you seen out of some of the veterans in that regard? Well, Garrison's been by far the, the one guy because not only will he say the things, he has their respect. You know, no one else has been able to be as successful as he has at this level. And so what he does is he has the respect as a player. And then so he shows them when he says something as well. Uh, but, you know, it's uh, uh, Sterling has not been playing. Uh, uh, Walker Miller hasn't developed at that level that Garrison has on the court. Andrew Playtech, the same thing. So it's been uh, uh, he talks to all those guys, the, the older guys, and he gets their opinions. But he's the one guy that so far that I've listened to more than anybody. Great. Thank you. Kiara, followed by Juliet. Hey, Coach, how are you? I just wanted to ask about um, Carwin Walton and how he was doing. I've been hearing that he's very quiet esque. Um, he's very serious on the court and he just has a, a shot to die for. So I'm just wondering how he's been doing and how he's been um, developing uh, so far. Okay. He is a very quiet youngster. It's hurting him badly right now because he doesn't only. He doesn't want to talk to his teammates. He doesn't want to talk to me. He doesn't want to talk on the defensive end of the floor. And that's a that's a huge negative. We've got to get him out of that. But uh, he is developing as a player. I think he's getting better. He does have an ability to shoot the ball. His, his ball's got some weird spin on it, but he ends up in the bottom of the net a lot. And uh, we're hoping that it ends up there even more so this season. But I think he's the kind of young man that's going to play some, and then he'll get a little more, and then he'll get a little more, and get a little more because – He's just got to feel comfortable. And so far, I don't think he feels comfortable. Juliet? Yes. I wanted to ask Coach about um, how do you think Don Tread Styles will impact your basketball team? How is he off the court? And how do you feel about your ta your team's chances going into the season? Well, Don Trez, it's hard to say how he's going to fit in because it's a year away. But I love his athleticism, love his focus, uh, love his desire to want to be a better player. Uh, he's really putting in the work, and uh, I just hope I'm hopeful that all basketball gets a chance to happen this year. And I think in Kinston they have a record of winning, and I think he wants to keep that going. So we'll have to see there. And right now I'm like every coach. I'm holding my breath every day, every time the phone rings, every time somebody comes in to see me. We're just trying to get better today and see what's going to happen tomorrow. But uh, we've got a group that I truly have enjoyed. Coaching, I think I've only gone wacko about three times out of today. I think maybe probably see the 29 or 30. So I've really enjoyed coaching them. I've got several more hands up. So just limit it to one question right now, please. Thank you. Ross Martin, then Vashti. Hey, Coach, you mentioned Curran Walton. But I was wondering kind of as a team, what you think about um, this roster as a, as a shooting team from the perimeter and how you think right now they could be. And, and in particular, what Puff Johnson can bring in addition to some of the other perimeter players. Well, during practice, we're making a heck of a lot more than we did last year in the games. So I'm hopeful that we'll make more in the games this year than we did last year. But uh, shooting, I'd say that Kerwin, uh, Kerwin would be the guy I think everybody would pick as the best shooter. Uh, Puff would be in that mix. RJ would be in that mix. Andrew would be in that mix. Uh, Caleb, sometimes his shot looks absolutely perfect. Sometimes he doesn't use his leg enough and he misses short more than anything else. Uh, but right now, uh, we're making a heck of a lot more shots from the perimeter than we made last year during the games. But again, you got to see what it's going to uh, be like in, in the games and can they do it. Vashti, then Greg Hall. Hi, Coach. Thanks for your time. Uh, you mentioned that you guys had a scrimmage uh, last night. I'm curious what you liked or what you saw that you liked from that team and with that scrimmage heading into your first regular season game. You know, it's, it's, it's really hard when you scrimmage yourself, you know, you're not scrimmaging somebody else and trying to focus, okay, what on the white, well, boy, that was great, but oh, bum, the guy on the blue team did a sorry job. So I don't know if the offensive play was that good or the defense was that bad, but we just needed to get out in front of officials because we're going to set a world's record on number of fouls. And I'm hopeful that the officials will call more fouls than my coaches, assistant coaches do in practice. Uh, but it does work them a little bit too. I mean, they're out there and we went 20 minutes and took a five minute break, went 20 more minutes. Uh, 
Uh, we stopped several times just trying to get points across. Uh, but I think the rebounding, I mean, we as our big guys are going to the backboards. And I'd say that that's the one thing that's been more encouraging and more consistent than anything else that we've done. Greg Hall, then Joe Mazur. Roy, how do R.J. Davis and Caleb Love play together uh, on the court at the one and two? Uh, they've really done a nice job. You know, they're both freshmen and haven't played together any until this year. And uh, there'll be a lot of times they'll be on the court together. Uh, they, of course, there'll be some times that Caleb will be at the point, and there'll be some times that R.J. will be at the point, and the other guy will be on the bench. But they're going to play a heck of a lot together this year as well. And I think so far, 28, 29, whatever it is, practice is in. Uh, they're willing to share the ball. Uh, Caleb is more of a volume, volume shooter uh, that I'm more of the, one of those guys that wants to see a higher percentage. And so we get both of them to understand that. Joe Mazur, then Brian Keyes. Coach, assuming you actually get to play some games, uh, how are you guys preparing for having some fans in some venues, lack of fans in others, and having to draw that energy? And how much do you think that'll impact the actual game? Well, we're not thinking about that at all, Joe. And I understand what you're saying. I mean, it's going to be different walking out that tunnel. You know, and all of our former players talk about the thrill of running through the tunnel and hearing the fans, seeing all the blue. And uh, so that part's going to be different. But uh, uh, we haven't prepared for that at all. Uh, uh, we've tried to prepare to do the things between the lines that we can control and providing our own enthusiasm. And uh, does it make enough difference to you? If it's important enough to you, then you're not going to be concerned about those other things. And that's the way we've tried to attack it. But uh, we had music going last night. And the only thing is, during our scrimmage of just our own team, I like to stand up and coach. I had to tell them to set the daggum stuff down so I could coach a little bit. Uh, Brian Keys. Roy, you've got a number of legacies on the team this year. But I'm just kind of curious, what's it like coaching Puff Johnson this year after having his brother? That I've got a lot of legacies. Uh, is that what you said? Yeah, Lebo and KJ oh, and oh, I got you. I, <laughs> I do know who who their parents are and have uh, been around their parents and helped coach their parents. But uh, I, I'm I'm not concerned about that. I really am not. Uh, you know, if if Ryan McAdoo could shoot like his dad and the same size of dad, and Creighton Lebo could shoot like his dad. Uh, uh, KJ had the speed of his his dad and the ability. I'd be a hell of a lot better coach. Mark Armstrong. Uh, Roy, you've had a number of seasons where you started out with a freshman point guard. What's your level of comfort with the, this year's guys relative to, say, maybe a Ty Lawson in the past? Not very big. I mean, <laughs> you go back and you think uh, uh, Bobby Fraser started early, but we had Quentin Thomas who had our already been here this that was his third year I guess we had Ty Lawson but we also had Bobby Frazier you know so every one of those down the road there was somebody else right now at this time uh, our point guard will be R.J. Davis or Caleb Love and both of those guys are freshmen so there's there's not a great deal of security there in my mind there's no uh, Linus's blanket over there on our bench but uh, I do trust those kids and I'm beginning to trust them more and more every day and uh, that's that's who we have, and we're going to let them play. Got time for two last questions for Coach before we bring Garrison in. Luke Buxton and then Art Chansky. Hey, Coach. In the NBA bubble, shooting percentages were up, and in some conversations I've had with players, they've noted that they think that will actually help them, the limited amount of fans, noting that kind of self-confidence was an issue last year, especially with shooting percentages. Do you have an indication or in your best guess how much of a factor do you think that will play in kind of helping um, – Oh, you know, that, that's probably a good question. I have, I've never thought of it because if you can shoot the that gun ball, you can shoot it. I don't care if you're in a barn or the wind's blowing or whatever. If I can shoot it better than you, I don't know. The wind blowing will definitely have it a factor on it. But uh, if I can shoot it better than you, I'm going to make more than you. I don't know that last year, uh, I hope the Dickens, it doesn't even pertain to anything this year. But uh, uh, we have some kids who can shoot the ball and shoot it well in drills and what you have to do is be tough enough to, I'm not going to say it like Joel Berry said, I tell everybody, but uh, uh, you have to be tough enough to step up and make a shot on game day. And, uh, you know, they, you should be a little more excited. They're 
uh, going to be referees that is somebody else you're playing. You're not uh, beating up on your own teammates. Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see. But uh, I do think that we're making more in drills now than we did last year. Final question, Art. Hey, Roy, let me end with an, kind of an existential question. You know, you... You spell that, Art? I can't spell it. I can say it. <laughs> but, uh, you, you know, you were involved. Uh, you're interested in it. And you all did that great video with uh, your championship players involving social justice and so forth. And athletics, athletes were so much more involved, it seemed, this year in that stuff than it was in the past. From from you from where you were, were sitting and you watched the whole thing unfold, did you think that it was positive, overall positive, for, for athletes to get involved as much as it did? Yes, I did, Art. I think it because there are so many times on the front line and people say, oh, I recognize that guy. Oh, yeah, he's he, he is this or he is that. It, there's a respect there that uh, uh, in today's times, people expect athletes to not just go to the ballpark or not go to the uh, gym. And uh, they've got to be involved. And they have the platform to say things. And it's heard more. You know, it's different times. I mean, I personally think this is the worst time we've ever had in our country. There's more division in our country than we've ever had. It's been a political mess. It's been uh, racial inequality. I mean, it's some people, what has happened uh, with our police force and those things. I mean, you and I were in school here when the Vietnam War was going on and they were protests and people weren't unhappy, but there's more division in our country now than I've ever seen. And I'm glad that people uh, if they have a strong opinion, and I'm glad they're saying it because this is America and this is free speech. And, and I love the part that our players have felt comfortable enough to do it. If they have not felt comfortable, I say, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to go along with everybody else. But whatever you say, let's say it. And don't surprise me is my biggest thing. You know, Don't throw something out there that I never even thought of. But uh, it's, it's a difficult time in our country. But I'm happy that people are... Uh, showing that this is the United States and we can say things and have our strong beliefs. Thanks, Thanks Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Uh, we'll get, uh, Garrison is in the hall here. He'll be right in. Go ahead and raise hands. Get ready for questions for Garrison, please.